Streamlit keeps expanding the capabilities of its product. And very recently, they came out with these things called session states and callback functions. So in this video, let me show you how to use these to make our apps a little bit more sophisticated. All right, let's get into it. So I listened to your feedback. Some of you told me that my font size was too small, so I increased it. I hope this is more readable now. Uh, what we do with session states is basically you are creating a variable that will be available through reruns of the app. So for example, when you change something in the app, you see that here in this corner that this little thing that says running, right? So normally when you have variables, when you define variables on Streamlit, the whole app or the whole code gets run from the beginning to end. So if I create a variable here uh, saying that A equals to five, even if I update it somewhere here, when I change something, the app gets run from the beginning. So A is equal to five again. So the change that you did in the middle of the code will be gone. So this is a, what session states is trying to solve, basically. Uh, how we do it, so I'll just show you first what we're going to do. So let's say we have a data frame and we want to see fewer or more columns of the data frame. And then, you know, then I can click this and show fewer columns or more columns as I see fit. So how I do this is basically I am defining a variable, but this variable belongs in the session state variable of the streamlet. Uh, library. So Streamit library has a session state and inside the session state you can create variables that you like like this. Uh, you can also do it like this just so you know. I prefer it in kind of like a dictionary way but you can just do this and also you know say that it equals a 10 whatever. Uh, but I prefer doing the, the first line like as in the first line and uh, after you do this, this is basically run only one time. It's actually pretty like hard coded. You can see you're saying if number of rows already exists in the session state, then you do not create this. That's why this only gets run in the first run. Uh, as, as I said, this, is get, this gets run every time from the beginning to end when you rerun the app or you change something in the app or the user inputs something new. Uh, but because we say if only this doesn't exist, then run this, this only gets run in the first time. So after that, what I'm doing is I'm reading my data frame uh, and then I created this buttons. So we'll talk about it in a second. And I am just showing the data frame, but only enough, uh, only the amount of rows that is equal to this number. And this number is defined in the state. So I'm saying get whatever this number is in the session state number of rows and show me that many. So as you can see in the beginning, we only showed uh, five, but I can increase it, I can decrease it. How do I do the increasing and decreasing is I have two buttons and these buttons, if they're ever pressed, they go in here, if increment, uh, then they increase the number of rows by one or decrease the number of rows by one. But still this doesn't change uh, the fact that the app is run linearly. So if I move this one down here, it will actually not work immediately. Oh, let's even move this one down there too. So what happens is then uh, I declare the first uh, variable, the session state variable, and then I read the data and then I show the data and then I click the increment button. So, and then I change the number of rows in the session state. Let's see what happens when, that, when we do that. Okay, so if I click more columns, see what happens. Nothing happened. If I click it again, it shows me one more. If I click it again, it shows me one more. But actually, we can look inside uh, what the session state is. Okay, so here I'm increasing, right? And it says, okay, session number of columns is 10, but I'm only seeing nine. So why is that? Well, also with the fewer ones, hey, I clicked fewer and I increased one. Or I do this, you know, I am saying show only seven, but it's actually showing me eight. So what's happening is because we're doing the change after the display, 
after showing us after displaying the data frame we are changing it we are changing the session state the variable in the session state but it doesn't get run from the beginning and that's why it only shows us uh, the amount that we said before it is because these buttons are below the display so what happens is it runs from the beginning it says okay we don't need to do this reads the data set displays the data set and then it sees that okay this was actually clicked then i increase it but it stops here and then it says okay end of code don't have to do anything else and then when you click again it starts from the beginning but then again this is at the end so it doesn't work so that's why i will put this back before the display but there's actually a very nice way of how you can make changes even after you display something and then have it affect the display and that we do with the callback functions so I'll show you it in a different example. So this one. All right, so we have a bunch of things that we need to do. So now I have a new uh, session state variable. I will make it type. I'll explain to you what I'm doing in a second. Okay, so let's see what it looks like now. Okay, this is the first bit that we did. Let's say in the second section, what I'm trying to do is, let's say I have six uh, columns, right? Some of these are categorical columns and some of these are numerical columns. So for example, passenger count, trip distance, fare amount are all numerical columns. They are continuous. They can be any number. Uh, but a look, pick up location ID, drop off location ID and payment type are actually categorical, even though they are not ABC or a text, they can actually only be a certain number of things. And also they do not have the relationship of, you know, 239 is bigger than 193. They're just different locations. And so they do not have a numerical relationship between them. So let's say I want to look into the distribution of these um, columns specifically. One way I can do it is I can look into the categorical ones. Uh, for the categorical ones, I want to do a uh, histogram. I want to be able to see the distribution of them. Uh, for numerical ones, I just want to see the mean, standard deviation, minimum, maximum, etc. So stuff like that. Uh, how we can do this is basically using callbacks. But before we start using callbacks, I'll show you how you would do this without using the callbacks and why it would not work. So let's say I want to do this, right? Okay, so I'm saying the categorical ones are these three, numerical ones are these three. Uh, and those are the ones that I can select from here. And maybe after selecting which column I want to look into, then I want to decide what kind of analysis I want to do on them. Uh, but I can only do numerical analysis on numerical ones and categorical analysis on categorical ones. So that's why, depending on what I choose here, this list should change to show me the other uh, list of columns. Um, if I did this immediately what it would look like is okay i'm creating a radio uh, input and it basically when it looks like this it's like radio box or radio select box something like that uh, i'm saying okay tell me what kind of analysis do you want categorical or numerical and depending on what the user chooses i am saying okay change the session state type to this one so let's see if this works i'm changing it to categorical but it actually changes this, this is, these are the numerical ones. I'm changing it to numerical. So this works. This, this looks like the numerical one, but this, these are actually categorical ones. So it does categor numerical analysis on categorical features. This is exactly the opposite, opposite of what I want. Uh, and this is the problem that we had previously here, right? If I put this inputs before or after the table, then the problem is that the, t the change happens, but it does not actually occur in the display that we want it to happen. So here, in this case. Um, that's why you cannot do this this way. That's why you need to use callback functions. How you do that is like this. So instead of this one, I'll show you this one. This is one way of doing it. So here, I am just reading what the user said, categorical, numerical. So instead of uh, saying that, okay, this is the session state type variable now. I'm saying, okay, this is just some variable. And this variable is going to go 
into a function called handle click when a button is clicked. And this function looks like this. So what that function does is basically saying, okay, now the type variable in the session state is equal to new type. Uh, so this works because when this button is clicked, which is here, I'll show you, this is this one, then this guy is run first. So the session state, uh, state is changed first and then everything is run from uh, top to bottom. And that's why this takes effect first before showing everything and that's why it actually works. So let's see, I changed categorical, I say change, categorical analysis, categorical columns to choose from. I change to numerical and I say change, Ca numerical columns to choose from and numerical analysis. So everything works. Uh, so just to recap, just so that you understand what's happening here. So now, you know, this is the first part that we did. This is the second part. What I'm saying is, okay, these are the different types of columns. I ask the user to choose from the type of column that it wants to do the analysis on. And then I'm uh, giving the user a chance to choose if they want categorical or numerical analysis. And then based on that, if it's categorical, I show them a bar chart or distribution. Uh, otherwise, I'll, I'll give them the description of like, what is the minimum, what is the maximum, what is the mean, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but when the user changes something, when the user changes their selection in the radio button, and then they click the button to say change, what happens is this guy runs first. That's why the session state, the type variable in the session state is updated. And then this is run and then this is run. And that's why we are able to show the correct list of variables or uh, columns. There's one other way if you don't want to use buttons, for example, and it is this one. Uh, so here I'm using the radio button, but you can use other things. You can even use text input. You can use, um, I don't know, select uh, drop down menus probably. Uh, what I do here is I am again asking, okay, what kind of analysis do you want? Categorical or numerical are the options. So you can see here. Oh yeah, so we also need the, the we need a different function for this one. I'll explain in a second. Uh, yeah, so we can see here now that we don't have the button. And uh, what I do is instead of saying on click run this function, this is the callback function, I am saying this just has a different uh, syntax, but it's, it does the same thing. On change goes to handle click without button function. So this is the new callback function that I'm using. Um, and basically the same thing happens. So if I go here and I change the numerical, it updates again. So I don't have to click an extra button. You know, this is again, this, this will work. If this was a text input, if I type something and press enter, the same thing would happen. So uh, basically what happens is here, instead of giving it to a variable and then putting that variable as an argument to this callback function, uh, we create a key for the specific input that we're collecting. And then we say, okay, this, if this key exists, because this needs to be the same thing as here, I say, okay, this new, the type variable in the session state uh, equals to this new variable or this new input that I collected from the user. Um, so you can see this is on change on the radio button. It is on click on a normal button, uh, but I'll show you how to find out also uh, the ones that are not uh, like this, or if you wanna use a different type of input. So, you know, we can go to text input, for example, and you can see here on change again, then it goes to the callback function 
what else do they have number input again it has on change so you basically need to consult the documentation to see uh, what is the way to call the callback function here and after you've done this you're basically done so it's a very neat solution by streamlet to do things a little bit more in a sophisticated way because Previously, I also felt a little bit like, okay, something is missing, you know, you cannot really connect things together. So this way now you can create small games uh, because, you know, you're keeping the session state of like who did what move. You can also create widgets that affect each other. So as I showed here, uh, when I change what type of things that needs to be shown, it updates it here. So this was something that was, I think, a big gap and now it's filled. So I'm very happy that stream came up with this. <laughs> I hope that video was helpful for you. A lot of you has been asking me about session states or in general handling states on Streamlit. So I'm very happy to be able to deliver on this finally. If you want to also create your own first Streamlit app or you kind of want a little bit more help on handling Streamlit, go and check out my free Streamlit template that will get you to make your first app with Streamlit in a matter of hours, maybe not even hours, like minutes. So uh, go and check that one out. I'll leave it in the description and have a nice day. I'll see you around.